Hey there, it's Girish. This is episode 24 and a special one at that. Number 24 as a tribute to Kobe Bryant and all the people like him, heroes who inspire us every day. A warm welcome to the Mission Junior podcast. I'm your host Girish Shivakumar. As I was preparing another story for this week's release, I realized it was episode number 24. So I made another plan to talk about people who have inspired us to do what we do. By the way, number 24 is a jersey worn by Kobe Bryant for most part of his career. Well, I believe we are all inspired by someone. We always look for motivation from someone's action. it could be anybody a sports star a teacher friend anyone we all look up to someone from time to time this episode is a tribute to all such heroes in our life again for me i have a few idols who i have followed right through growing up and even now most of them are sports stars kobe was right at the top his attitude the mamba mentality of putting in the work every day day in day out and taking on the challenges motivates me even now The other reason is you see it's been nearly 10 months since I started the podcast my second one and I felt it's good to take a pause and reflect on the journey so far so I asked a few fundamental questions all over again why did I start the podcast how did mission junior begin and so on yes in the last year the number of listeners have gone up more people download the episode every week new listeners would go back and check the archives as well And yes those social media channels of Mission Junior also get new listeners to the show. I had a strong belief about podcast especially the type of content I wanted to create and it was a little different from when I started podcast in the first place. So am I on the right side of where I wanted to be? I can say I had like I had like three big reasons to why I wanted to start a podcast. Number 1 I love my work. I really enjoy the work that I do. Being in the clean tech space for 9 years I started with Mission Junior in a different form when I started blogging about it with the name of Full Circle in about 2012. Shunya means zero in the Indian language of Sanskrit and by now you would probably realize that I cover all topics that enable us to transition to the zero carbon economy. Number 2, I believe this transition happens through a collective effort, a collaboration of people and ideas. It needs an inspired and motivated soul to pass on the message and get more people involved. So podcast, blog and all the activities online and offline help in this regard. If you remember, I regularly ask you to share the episode to 3 people. Just 3 people every time would help in the long run. So again, at the end of this episode, if you like the episode and the theme, I would again encourage you to spread the message to 3 people every week. And reason number 3, I meet people around me who are pretty good at their work. They are pretty good at what they do and are really excited to spread the positive vibe. They have amazing stories to share and have a big influence on the future of our planet and I definitely want to bring these stories to you. So now if you feel that I haven't done justice to my three reasons well do let me know feedback is appreciated as always missionjunior@gmail.com is the email id you can also get in touch on the social media channels or through the web page missionjunior.com the three reasons again number 1 i enjoy my work number 2 i believe that the future of the planet is ours to change and three I can bring amazing stories to you to get motivated. Talking of amazing stories and the inspiration behind them. What is it that inspires and motivates people to do what they do? I mean, you you have to admit that the fact that the work done in the space at this point in time, challenging the status quo is really hard. You really need that extra motivation to push your limits and get going. So as a tribute to all the people who inspire our work and motivate us, let's listen in to a few stories from our guest whose work was featured in the previous podcast episodes listen in as they share the reason on why they got started or their intrinsic motivations let's begin with shailaja rangarajan who shares a motivation on creating better urban spaces by upcycling reimagine actually is an outcome of my earlier voluntary work so before i got involved with anything to do with waste i was part of the corporate industry working as a business process consultant around 7 8 years ago in our apartment complex 
a team of us we thought why don't we look at waste segregation and handling of waste in house so this was at a time when people were just waking up to the concept of waste even in bangalore so we were four volunteers who said okay we will take it up on ourselves to figure out what waste management process can be set up in our apartment complex so this involved lot of self reading and self learning as well through trial and error when we put in a waste management process in place it was like segregation of waste in house composting of waste and uh, partnering with a responsible vendor who can handle our waste etc and as i started learning more and more about it and uh, this also took me beyond the four walls of my apartment complex and I, then i started doing voluntary work over the weekends trying to help other apartment complexes also handle their waste training the housekeeping staff creating more awareness about waste and everything then this went beyond and uh, then i started collaborating with bbmp to set up the required infrastructure and uh, also for the pickup process of waste from a door to door uh, angle so as and when i got involved and uh, literally started getting my hands dirty i was also walking through mounds of garbage and landfills and the stink and the leach and everything was kind of hitting me in my face then i started thinking how come we are having this problem now i never as a kid remembered seeing this kind of waste that was when it was a wake up call for me here i'm going about telling people segregate waste handle your waste responsibly and all but is that enough are we not slowly killing the environment and the reason was pretty pretty it's very simple because of our consumption lifestyle it all zeroed in on that the way we consume because of excess affordability the use and throw culture has kind of set in unknowingly and aspirational living also is now a way of life for us where we want more and the latest of everything then i told myself so as long as we are just segregating waste and continuing to throw out uh, stuff that we don't want to use any more we are actually not doing any good so ideally i would want to tell people just don't buy unless you really need it and if you have to buy look at other alternatives where we don't consume virgin resources well it all sounds fine but uh, i also knew that nobody would take me seriously because it's a very very idealistic way of living that's when the idea of upcycling struck me because that is actually nothing but the traditional indian lifestyle where we constantly repurpose material that we don't need and instead of just going and buying stuff that we need we see okay can we figure out something or uh, figure out a way of reusing something that we already have in the house instead of going and buying something and that is what is upcycling a phrase that has been coined by the west but has been an intrinsic indian lifestyle and from that thought was how reimagined came into being where it was launched 3 years ago as a platform to promote upcycling as part of mainstream everyday consumption you can listen to our full story on episode 8 following up on that story i featured another woman entrepreneur padmashri balaram on episode 22 Padmashri helped set up a waste to energy power plant. But how did she get started? Was it a career choice? What was the motivation? It had very little to do with the career but more to do with being a mother. I used to find that uh, my children were wheezing and coughing without a reason and uh, I I soon discovered that it could it co- it was because of the large amounts of garbage that was collecting at every uh, part around my house. and um, so that became my mission because uh, being a, a biochemist uh, in my education i felt that the uh, the all the smells the insects the general uh, problem with the garbage is what is bothering my children so i decided to take on the waste not so much processing but just getting rid of the waste as such that's how it started and it was very organic from there onwards Padmashri wanted to do it for her children and thus began her story. I also featured Ayush Jha who went the other way around and found an inspiration. Let's listen in. So uh, I'm from Bhilai that's in central India. It's a fairly fairly uh, green place a lot of trees around. So we never really had air pollution as a problem. And my and my father's also born there and uh, he had to move to Delhi. He got a promotion and he moved to Delhi in the corporate office. when he did in 2016 
there was a massive, massive uh, uh, smog hit weeks, actually, not just days in NCR. Um, that was probably the first time media really took air pollution seriously. And unfortunately for us, my father was there. Uh, and we've, we've been, you know, as a family, we've been, you know, very, very uh, focused on, you know, doing yoga and working out, etc. And my father continued that, um, that habit. And he went out to, you know, do some workout in the morning. And he got really, really sick. In fact, he was admitted in the hospital for four days. So, you know, we got worried. We, we spoke to the doctors and they said it's because of bad air. He had very, very bad chest ache. Um, uh, he had wheezing. Uh, so it was just not a good situation to be in. What would, you know, a knee-jerk reaction be in this situation? Uh, we understand air pollution is a problem. And indoor air pollution can be 3 or 5x worse than outside. So let's obviously look at indoor air pollution, right? And what anyone would do is what exactly what I did. I went ahead, bought a 15,000 air purifier and installed it in my home. Uh, it was a it was a government quarter, a regular 3 BHK. And I didn't know that we would need like five air purifiers. I just bought one because that's what my common sense said. And still the problem persisted. He still had those chest problems and all the issues which I told him about. And it was it was really sad. And uh, so I, I could see my dad struggling with this and slowly, slowly started hitting me and my mother as well. So I researched upon on this uh, and I realized that an air purifier can only clean around 300 square feet. That's roughly one bedroom. What about a 1500 square feet home? You'll need probably four or five of them. Now, if you're talking about say a 15,000 rupee regular purifier, we're talking about putting in 60, 70,000 rupees in just buying purifiers. And then again, you'll have to change the filters in the next four to five months. So this was a fairly daunting cost overall, right? For the average middle class guy, say 70,000 rupees is quite, quite steep. And I, and I realized, wow, this is a massive problem. So instead of going ahead and buying multiple purifiers, I thought, let's reverse engineer this purifier. What is it? So I opened the purifier and it literally is such low tech, Girish. It's so sad that it's for 15,000. It's actually just a filter strapped with a fan. That's, that's what a air purifier is. That's it. A fan and a filter. Interesting. <laughs> so how can it be worth 15,000? You get smartphones, which, which are, which are like supercomputers for 15,000. And, and this is such low tech. It's a fan and a filter worth 15,000. I studied, I started researching on it and I realized that there, there have been people who've, who've done some hacks on, you know, making air purifiers really cheap. So what they've done is they've strapped a regular exhaust fan with a filter. Uh, and, and they are retailing those purifiers for around 3,000 rupees. And I was like, wow, this is something, man. This is great. This is super. And I wondered, can it, can the price of this sort of a purifier even go down? Um, and we did a little bit of research. And I, was, and I was in Delhi then, right? So in Delhi, all your bedrooms have air conditioners. I thought, can we do something about this? Can we have purification with an AC? So for, for purification to happen, you need the airflow to be in a restricted way. Um, you can't purify air using a ceiling fan. It can be done in a closed box. So ACs were the obvious next choice. So that's where, you know, Clairco kind of, the, the, the basic thought of Clairco came in. You can listen to the full story on episode 17. And the solar man from India, Dr. Chaitin Singh Solanki, shared his journey on episode 11. The Gandhi Global Solar Yatra was a movement that he started. Incidentally, he has also started a new movement called Energy Swaraj. What is it and who was his inspiration? So this idea of Energy Swaraj, like Gandhiji's Gram Swaraj, I believe is a very, very powerful idea and should be adopted not at one place, but everywhere in the world, irrespective of whether it is a developing country or developed country, irrespective of the place, whether there is electricity connection or no electricity connection. Everyone has to adopt this idea. So let us begin this movement of energy Suraj. And I'm calling it movement because until unless everyone joins it, it will be difficult for us to you know, get a reversal of a climate change. And talking of inspiration, I had two guests who were inspired by nature. Here's the bit from episode 18 featuring Neil Matthews. 
Listen in to why he enjoys his lifestyle and what is real happiness according to him. I like all the things natural around me even though I am in a city and uh, I would like to have all kind of animals uh, everything around uh, in the ecosystem we are living in. Of course there is a little bit of uh, learning and uh, practices you need for example uh, when the entire area people are uh, putting fire to the grass and when my plot is having water presence it is a tendency that almost all type of snakes uh, come to this plot we learned how to live with that even our uh, we can detect our adopted dog from the road when he he barks uh, we know there is a snake in front of him because he makes a sound uh, to reverberate uh, on the floor so like that you know you have to adapt to the ecosystem to live with it but it is very enjoyable like you need uh, more than 24 hours to finish you know observing things around this so that's that's the enjoyment part of it so uh, the thing is uh, being a complete uh, sense means like you no know, i am actually showing the a model to my uh, children their friends uh, their schools colleges and to the society that way i am leading a silent revolution we, that being knowing that is a big happiness and then during the discussions on the amazon rainforest wildfires i had to ask then renowned global environmentalist tony juniper on his inspiration to get into environmental conservation i began my interest in in all of this at a very very early age actually I, the first things i can remember as a small child is being interested in plants and in animals and that interest grew into uh, a passion for natural history to go and look for birds to understand how nature works to have a passion for fossils and plants and rivers and fish and all of these things um that have stayed with me all of my life and as one takes an interest in the natural world of course you can't help but be aware of what's happening to it and so that love of nature then turns into a concern and uh, a willingness and and passion to be involved in in conservation and that's really where i i life took me i i had a period at university studying a, a zoology degree initially and that led me into um the choice of whether i would like to pursue a career in research or whether i would like to join the conservation world and i i did the latter and uh have spent the last 35 years therefore working on all of these subjects and um you know i think we've seen some progress over time we have an awful lot more to do um but at least uh we have made a good start in getting people to understand the implications of some of this stuff again that was an amazing story you can listen to the full story on episode 20 and finally i have to mention about the community that i'm part of the sustainability mafia well what can i say about the community every day we help each other out and move forward the stories of every individual in the group is an interesting one in itself you can listen to what we do by checking episode 13 but one part of the conversation where ganesh shankar emphasizes on the need to be the change we want to see is worth a listen here's that part so one day a lady came to ramakrishna paramahamsa with a boy and told my son uh, it's lot of uh, sweets and i if you tell him to reduce on it or cut down on it he would probably do that so ramakrishna paramamsa told uh, the lady can you come uh, after 15 days vivekananda was sitting just beside him he observed this the lady came after 15 days and then uh, ramakrishna paramamsa took the boy on his lap and told please stop having so much sweets if it will affect your uh, teeth and you will have a lot of uh, problems later on in your life so uh, please why don't you stop eating so much sweets the boy actually listened to him and told okay i'll i reduce my eating sweets and the lady and the boy left vivekananda asked uh, ramakrishna paramamsa curiously you could have told the same thing uh, 15 days back uh, why did you tell now i mean you could have told it before no 
Ramakrishna Paramahamsa told that uh, 15 days back, even I was eating a lot of sweets. And uh, I had to control that eating and I have reduced my uh, eating sweet. Now I can tell the boy. So this goes with uh, all of us. I mean, sustainability is very important. It is about what are we practicing today that can we can actually tell it to others and they can tell it. So it should start from ourselves. And this story of sustainability, Ramakrishna Paramahams has actually compelled me to take more action in my life on sustainability and so would I tell to others. So please think of what you could do if you are in the field of sustainability for yourself. And why don't you share it with others, whether it is about having a half a bucket water or uh, water for your shower or to have for bathing or using a mug of uh, water for uh, I mean, brushing your teeth. There are so many other things, small, small things, fixes that we can do to make sustainability a kind of a default choice. So yes, those were the snippets I could put in this episode number 24 as a tribute to Kobe Bryant and all the heroes who inspire and motivate us. Listening to the stories I covered so far all over again has motivated me an extra bit. I hope you were moved by the stories as well. I would encourage you to check the complete podcast episodes and give me some feedback and help spread the word. If you know of someone who does interesting work in any corner of the world, put me in touch, let me hear their story and help spread the word. Coming up on episode 25, a special guest again, he has an interesting story also. A person who is very passionate about what he does. Want to know more? Subscribe now and stay tuned. Once again, Being inspired is what drives our work today. Let's hope that our work inspires someone tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Signing off, this is Mission Chunya, Towards a Zero Carbon Economy.